Hello everyone, back shooting in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the midday runs of the uh, computer models for today's uh, second video. So, um, the storyline is out earlier on today. We released the first video. It's here on the homepage. You can find it just above the stove desk. Uh, so, the GFS and the GM were really cold um, this morning with the uh, earlier runs of those models. Uh, the ECM was more wobbly. It had most of the cold air sort of grazing us, just flirting to our south and southeast. Um, so, it wasn't as cold as the other two. We're going to bring you up to date with the very latest uh, right now. We'll start off with the GFS. Have a look at GFS models. Have a look at GM Canadian model. We'll finish off with the ECM. Do you have it? It's updating as I'm speaking. So hopefully we'll be able to get all the charts in for the ECM. Do you have? We're going to start off with the GFS. I'm starting off on Friday with all of these charts. We've got this easterly wind. Coming in across the country on Friday as the high pressure is pushing up towards Scandinavia. Now, this is a really cold easterly at this stage, but you will certainly feel the chill in the air. And I suspect there will be night frost. There may even be some snow flurries around southeastern coast. We go through to uh, Saturday, the high pressure strengthening over Scandinavia. So a little bit more of an east southeasterly influence. That'll make it feel pretty bitter down in the south and southeast, although the really cold air is still actually uh, away to our east. There is the cold air um, on a Saturday with the upper air temperatures. So you see the west of Europe is in those green colours, the reasonably, um, well, not mild uh, upper air temperatures, but they're nowhere near as cold as it is further east. And you see why we're getting so interested and excited about the chance of this cold air, because this is a very, very deep and extensive cold pool, unusually so, but so late in the winter, see such a large block of severely cold air sitting up to the northeast of the country. So that's how things are looking on Saturday. By Sunday, the orientation and the shape of the Scandinavian high has changed, so that now we are pulling in a properly cold east wind. Follow those isobars back, and the air is coming from Russia. It's coming from a long way east. It's flooding that bitterly cold air, across Europe. There's the upper air temperatures for Sunday, showing that the minus 10 isotherm is pushing through the UK. Behind that, it's bitterly cold, and these easy winds will be feeding in increasing numbers of snow showers. That's how things are looking on Monday. Again, bitterly cold easterly winds feeding in across the country. They could well be bringing in heavy snow showers and that will be most likely to the east and to the south as well. There's the upper air temperatures, very, very cold upper air temperatures. We're bringing the minus 15 Celsius isotherm into the southeast of the country and East Anglia. That is certainly daytime temperatures staying at or below freezing all day uh, and feeling bitterly cold. And I suspect those east winds are bringing in a number of heavy snow showers as well. The freeze continues to Tuesday on tonight's GFS run. Uh, notice the isobars have got kinks in them, so that's telling us that there's little troughs and disturbances coming through on those easterly winds through uh, the North Sea, bringing an enhanced risk of snow showers. Notice how blocked it is from Greenland to Scandinavia. We've got a large blocking area of high pressure. That's locked in cold weather. Upper air temperature still looking really cold. And then let's go into the middle part of next week. We've got this area of low pressure developing around the Bay of Biscay. So that's having a go at dislodging the cold air. It's moving up from the south, coming into that cold air. That could be a proper dump of snow, a proper blizzard type uh, conditions moving up from the south. Eventually, you introduce some slightly less cold air to the far south, um, so maybe in the far south it will turn back to rain, but heavy snow through central and northern Britain uh, there. Into the extended range of the GFS, the cold air actually starts to come back again as we go through this first week of March, uh, and it generally just looks very cold and uh, really wintry as well. GFS ensembles are looking like this. So uh, it still is starting reasonably mild um, today with the uh, GFS ensembles. That's where we are. We're going to be going cooler. We talked about this earlier on. We're going to be going cooler for the rest of this week. But the real drop in temperature, and it is a very dramatic drop, takes place 
as we get through the weekend and into next week, going down, this is for London, going down to minus 15 Celsius, just about 850 HPA for a couple of days in the early part of next week. That's bitterly cold. I mean, you'll notice many of these ensemble members are trying to maintain the cold air going through the first week of March. That's a long way off. We could well be in for quite a prolonged cold spell. GM looks like that. The high pressure's in over Scandinavia on Friday. We've got these gentle easterly winds coming through. On Saturday, the easterly wind is picking up. It's strengthening as the high pressure inflates over Scandinavia. So by Sunday, we've got a bitterly cold easterly wind feeding across the whole of Northern Europe. Again, follow those ice bars back. The air is originating from Russia. Look at the upper air temperatures. Very cold air is coming across Europe and into the UK as well. Those easterly winds almost certainly dragging in, if not snow showers, maybe some longer spells of snow from, from the east, from the North Sea. Notice again the kinks in the isobars there. The Monday, for example, showing that have got uh, disturbances in the flow. And this continues through to Tuesday as well. These are classically cold and wintry looking charts with high pressure blocking things out from Scandinavia to Greenland. There's the upper air temperatures. They're even colder with the GEM than they are for the GFS. We are bringing the minus 15 Celsius ice firm further into eastern Britain. In the far southeast, we're going down to around minus 16 or minus 17 there. Uh, with the upper air temperatures. Again, that means on the surface we will have daytime temperatures below freezing all day. And this cold weather is maintained up to day 10. There's that area of low pressure on day 10, the 1st of March, that the GFS is picking up around Biscay. The GM also has that. That would be trying to bring more persistent snow into the south. And then finally, the ECMWF, I say this has just been updated while I've been speaking, so I'm not sure if we'll get to day 10 chart with this. We'll have a go, though. So we're going to start off on Friday again. This light easterly wind is coming in across the country. That continues up to Saturday. That takes us to Sunday, the high pressure inflating over Scandinavia, more of an easterly wind feeding in there on uh, sunny. There's the upper air temperatures showing we're not pushing the cold air through as quickly with the ECM as we do with the GFS and the GM. So by Sunday, the minus five ice is only just reaching the east coast. We haven't yet got into that minus 10 upper air um, upper air uh, temperature. We go through to Monday. Now, this is when the point where the ECM started to wobble uh, with the medium night run but look at this it's a midday run and the high pressure is still firmly over Scandinavia and so colder air is feeding in from the east on uh, Monday the minus 10 ice firm is pushing through from Europe into the UK so it's a little bit delayed getting that minus 10 line through but it does get there by the early part of next week and look at that this is when uh, the period when the ECM was wobbling early on today now it shows uh, bitterly cold easterly winds flooding across the UK. Uh, there's the upper air temperatures. It's in line now, the ECM, with the GFS and the GM. They are all showing a very cold, a bitterly cold start to next week. And those easterly winds would be feeding in lots of heavy snow as well. Let's just run on to the final couple of charts. That is the 216 hour chart for Wednesday, 28th of February. Again, look how much colder it is compared to uh, this morning's uh, ECM run. This is really cold and wintry with those easterly winds. I would dare say might even be um, uh, heavy snow coming in from the east. And there's the upper air temperature. This is a much, much colder run with the ECM tonight than we had this morning. Let's just see if day 10 chart has updated. Yes, it has. And uh, we remain truly locked into cold. The high pressure is shifting over towards Greenland. And that's starting to turn the winds more towards the north, perhaps. But if you have a look at the upper air temperatures, I think they'll still be cold. There we are. It's cold, very cold throughout the whole of next week now on tonight's ECM run. And there would be the risk of really heavy snow coming in uh, with that as well. So it's uh, really interesting times now because we've got the big three mods, the GFS, the GEM and the ECM. They're all going for very significantly cold weather starting either over the weekend or in the early part of next week. But by this time next week, all of the models are predicting we will be very cold and it runs on throughout most of next week with the threat of significant and substantial snow 
coming in as well. These are very, very exciting times. I hope you keep checking back to the videos for more uh, as we get closer and closer. Uh, it's going to be a case of counting down the days, I think, until this very cold weather sets in. Right, got that done in 10 minutes, so I uh, hope you found it uh, interesting and informative. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.